When you go to work, can a customer request you help them? Yes. What if you refuse? Can they request to get the manager? Yes. If you refuse to get the manager, then you as the employee have just made a management decision and can get yourself fired if the manager doesn't support your position. As manager, you're responsible for your actions. The customer can sue you for any injury that they sustain because of your actions and sue the manager and the owner all under the respondent superior rule. They say that the owner is responsible for the actions of his subordinates. So are the county supervisors responsible for the county employees? Yeah. The correct response as employee is, I'll get the manager or I'll get the owner because it's really the owner's decision whether you should go ahead and do what the customer wants or not. The minute you take that away from the owner and make it your decision, you're responsible. When the clerk of the court or the clerk of the recorder's office denies you your wishes without getting their supervisor, then they are taking the responsibility, which is not theirs to take because their superior, the named county recorder, or the named clerk of the court is the responsible one. They are making a legal determination which is against the law and they are damaging you under your Declaration of Independent rights to quote, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All men are created equal and since we are all equal, by what authority can they claim you are injuring another by filing your paperwork unless it can be proved that it's fraudulent such as a notarized deed of trust where the signature is a known forgery. By their act, they are asserting that they are more equal than you in status. Since they are in their public servant position and not their private sovereign capacity, they are lesser in status. They are actually there to serve you. This discussion of using paperwork to get agreement through conditional acceptance and affidavit is a powerful tool to use. To make it more powerful, one needs to get a notary involved. If the notary, who is an agent of the Secretary of State, and as such an agent of the court, who is holding a higher position than the Attorney General in the state government, in other words, the Secretary of State, his authority is higher than the Attorney General's, sends the notice of conditional acceptance and affidavit, along with payment in the form of approved for value, the payment is what gives the notary the legal authority to send the paperwork in and then note a lack of response by failure to set off the account and accept payment. Look into notary protest to see the requirements. Now an agent of the state has witnessed the lack of response or rebuttal to the documents and it is entered as a default judgment equal to a judge's entry of default judgment. If you have to go to court and present this as evidence, it has to be admissible as public documents under the rules, federal rules of civil procedure, and the maker or notary doesn't have to testify. If, in other words, if you take a document that's entered into the public record, like something that has been recorded at the recorder's office, the recorder doesn't have to come down and testify that that's a public record. The fact that it's stamped from the recorder's office is enough. Well, since the notary is an agent of the Secretary of State, the fact that it's stamped with their seal is enough. Later in court, documentation like this is golden as it supports your diligence to keep good records and being truthful. Or, oh, you know, a little overview of uh, administrative remedy would be that you have to understand the concepts of actions that you take. When the IRS sends you a letter saying, Dear Taxpayer, they're establishing a presumption that you're a taxpayer. If you don't refute that and say, uh, I, accept your, I accept your statement that I'm a taxpayer based on proof of claim that you show me validated evidence that supports your opinion that I'm a taxpayer. Because there's a court decision that says we, there's a difference between taxpayers and non-taxpayers and the government doesn't deal with non-taxpayers. Well, if there's non-taxpayers, explain to me who those people would be because I want to become one of them. So then if you can't establish the fact that I am a taxpayer, then I'm not a taxpayer, right? So now let's take a look at 
the difference between stating things that have some teeth and responsibility for the other side. Let's say you send a letter to the IRS and it's a declaration because anytime you state something that I declare, I declare that I don't owe you any taxes because I don't think I should have to pay. If you were the IRS and you got a letter like that, what would you think? Hey, I can toss this in the garbage because, okay, you told me what your opinion was, but there was no consequences if I throw this in the garbage. So let's, let's take it a step further. I don't believe that there's any law that makes me liable for paying taxes on my labor. And if you don't show me in a law, then I'm going to stop paying taxes on my labor. Aha, now we have a situation where there are consequences for me not showing you the law. Does it mean you're going to win? Not necessarily, but <clears throat> you have sent the letter in. They can argue that, well, let's see, did you send the, send the letter in with a proof of service and certified mail? Okay, there's no way for you to prove that you actually sent this letter, so we can ignore it and claim that we never got it, if push comes to shove, right? I mean, they can say, hey, we never received your letter, and then what do you say? Oh, okay, well, I'll have to send you another one, right? Because maybe you didn't even make a copy of the letter to have as evidence. So it's all about evidence. If you are going to send letters, make copies of them for your records and get a file going with my letters to the DMV or my letters to the court or my letters to the mortgage company or the credit card company or my tenant if you own property, whatever it is, you have to have some level of organization and that organization involves record keeping so that you can prove your case. If you are involved in a lawsuit, when you sue somebody, the initial serving of documents has to be done in person. You have to hire a process server, not a party to the case. It could be a friend of yours, but somebody who will swear that they tapped so-and-so on the shoulder and handed him the documents. Even if he didn't accept them and he dropped them on the, paper, on the floor, he, you have a witness that said, I handed so-and-so the documents. After the initial serving, where somebody has served somebody in person, all the servings subsequent to that can be done by mail. And in most cases, you know, we don't sue other people, so we're not um, serving people in person. We're suing them and sending them, um, you know, we've been sued. And in a counterclaim or in a situation where we've already been sued, all the documentation be, can be sent by mail. <clears throat> so all you have to do is mail off letters to them. You want to get yourself involved in a counterclaim because you want to become the plaintiff. So in an administrative thing, you are going to send documentation to them and say, you know, in the form of a counterclaim, I accept your lawsuit conditionally based on your proof of claim that you have a case against me. And I want like to see some evidence that you have a case against me, some proof. Let's say you're in a mortgage situation. I'll accept that I owe you money based on a proof of claim that you advanced any money to me in the first place, that you engaged in a lawful contract when the uh, deed and the promissory note were signed, that you gave me full disclosure of what was going on when the deed and the promissory note were signed, that, you, that I have a debt owed to you and you can substantiate that debt, and that um, based upon the fact that if I don't pay you, you will suffer a loss and you can prove that you'll suffer a loss. You know, so you send that off or, you know, and that maybe that you have a copy of the original wet ink signed promissory note and deed of trust. And you send that off, and if they fail to respond, then they lose, right? Now, you would send that off with a proof of service, registered mail, and you would have a notary send it off, and the notary would be allowed to send it off if you made payment, and your payment would be approved for value. Approved for value is a whole other discussion, 